Hey everyone. Well, we're back here with the uh, blue guitar plate. And um, in our last episode, we had taken out some, uh, some material in the center here, uh, just as a rough cut, so that we could um, get in here and, and measure uh, and see what the thickness was since this uh, was a little too thick for the gauge. Um, now, the job is to refine this surface and get the top kind of roughly the same thickness everywhere, you know, roughly. Um, and if we use this measuring device, Every time we take a little bit off, it's going to take a long, long time because this is slow. You've got to measure, be careful that you're measuring correctly, write down with a pencil, and then go back in here. And as soon as you cut, your measurement is gone anyway, your pencil mark is gone, and it's hard to tell exactly what you've done. So, as I mentioned, we're going to, we're going to use an old method that... Um, that the violin, early violin makers used um, in the Renaissance, and it's a, uh, uh, a marking technique. And I'm going to show it to you right now. Now, we've um, included a link to an excellent article by David Sora, a wonderful uh, violin maker who has a, a, a detailed description of how this is made. Of course, we did a little differently, but um, and then we also copied his, his thickness gauge, which is just a chunk of ebony that's calibrated in millimeters. So right now it's set for 14 millimeters, which a uh, um, little bit bigger than a half inch. And so the, what all this does is it, it makes marks with this, this point. And it's going to show us the thickness of the material. So we can make little marks wherever we want. And we can be sure that as long as we leave some marks, that we haven't taken too much off that area. Anyhow, I think you see how it works. So 14 millimeters, obviously pretty thick. We're still roughing. So now we have some marks to work from. Lighting for this job is really important. Uh, you have to be able to see properly. And it's pretty clear that if you have overhead lighting, it's kind of hard to see. So I like this oblique lighting where you, we can really tell what's going on. Now this is the the big bed roughing gouge that that had the um, some of you remember it had a hollow ground uh, edge on it which which doesn't really work and I've just I've just uh, corrected that problem and you can see it's working really well now and we're going to work down um, towards these little dots now. We're so oversized here that if we do take a little bit more than the dot is telling us, it's no big deal. And like a lot of things in woodworking, when you go from roughing to finishing, you get a chance to hone your skills and get used to the technique that you're using as you get closer and closer to your finished surface and just naturally get better at it. 
as the job progresses, you figure out the little ch changes in the wood grain. You remember which way things are going as you work. So, you know, again, we have some cross grain tear out here. But as you can see, as we take a lighter cut, the tear out gets smaller. Anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and mark it up again uh, a little bit thinner and we'll see how this works. So now it's at 14. Let's try 12. <laughs> All right, now it's at 14. Let's try 12. Okay. All right, oh, well, it's 13 now, so. All right, 11 and a half, that's fine. So as you can see in the, the photo of the Strad top in David Sora's article, Strad left a bunch of these marks in the plate in the finished violin. You can see the you can see the marks. And um, he clearly wasn't worried about that. In other words, he decided while he was tuning the plate that the, the last bunch of his guidance marks um, would have resulted in a part that was too thin for his liking. And so he just left the, these little guidance marks in there. Um, and you can see that on, on the picture of his work that the marks are very close together and kind of irregular, <laughs> sort of like mine are. Anyway, well, we'll go back and do some carving. I know that a lot of people like to use a drill press um, for this job and the drill the material out and I, I won't say that that's wrong exactly but I will say that I think it takes all the fun out of woodworking um, this is such lovely material and it's it's really fun to cut it if you drill a lot of holes in it, it's a lot less fun.
Now the other thing we can try is, um, you know, our, our trusty spokeshave. which makes quick work of smoothing this surface out. Of course, it doesn't take us, isn't capable of taking a, a super deep cut, but because it's a discriminant cutter, it offers the chance to create a nice fair surface. Okay. Okay, so that's right around 10 millimeters right there. Oh, just about 3 eighths of an inch. And it's really important to be able to do a good job at this because it really is the heart of the, of the guitar is the flexibility of the top plate and um, if it's too stiff we're just not going not to get a well-balanced capable guitar. We won't have a bass response if we leave it too thick and lack of bass response is really one of the big issues with arch tops as a group is the recipe for arch top guitars is really a pretty heavy recipe in terms of thickness. I think most arch top guitars are way thicker than they should be, way stiffer than they need to be, which is why most of them don't produce any real sonority, any weighty, potent, rear, uh, low end that, um, that we know they're capable of. So I'm new to this tool, <laughs> forgive me, I'm feeling a little clumsy, but it is working fine. And I think it's, it's a pretty darn good way to figure out where you are. Um, obviously the consequence for taking off more material than you want to take off is, um, means you've turned all your working hours into firewood. <laughs> Not a happy day. So we have to make sure that we 
stay within the thickness that we want. And that we can sneak up on it so as to be able to make our own judgment about how thick this particular piece of wood really wants to be, you know, to do its job. Of course, one thing you have to be mindful of is to try and keep the plate square with a, a little anvil that it's sitting on on the bottom. Um, and then in this tool, it, the little anvil has a nice piece of leather to keep it from marking the plate. Now, if you look at uh, David Sora's article, you can see a back of a cello made in Strad's shop. And you can, <laughs> you can see on that cello a whole lot of big marks <laughs> made by the anvil in his shop, which we can safely assume was not uh, covered with leather the way ours is. Okay, so we have some new depth dots to work with here. And, you know, it's your choice whether you want to use a gouge or uh, a discriminant cutting tool. So again, if I'm using a gouge, I have to guide it for depth of cut. And um, it means that, you know, the, the evenness of the cut is dependent on my ability to guide the gouge, you know, by adjusting the angle, steering it through the wood. And um, I think you can see you can do a pretty good job if you're careful. And it's pretty quick. What you have to be careful about is what I just did over here. So I erased all the marks, so I didn't pull out as quickly as I had, hoped, had intended to. So that's when you might want to start looking towards the spoke shave, which is a discriminant cutter. In other words, it refers to the surface you already have. Um, and, and so it makes a continuous cut that is a little easier to control. But you can see it's also not capable of taking a lot of material off. So we're gonna go back and stuff with a big gouge. Again, if we erase these marks and we stay within the, the limit of our marked periphery, These marks are 10 millimeters, so we know that there's plenty of material underneath since we're going to end up with, you know, well, less than five anyway. Maybe way less, depending on how the wood feels. So we can be a little cavalier <laughs> at this stage, but not for long, because pretty soon it's going to get serious as we approach our finished thickness and we're going to have to be real careful that we don't make a mistake that's going to that's going to make the plate unusable I'm going to try this other gouge
I should mention that probably what we don't want to do is put that point down right on, <laughs> right on our paper glue joint. We don't want to stress that glue joint out right now if we can help it. should do it <laughs> so just for the record if you do this and do it for the first time well you'll be in the same position that I'm in right now because this is a new technique to me although as I said it's a very old one I've always done it by measuring 
It's a different kind of measuring. And we see it's quite efficient. Seems great. Accurate. Easy to read. And one, one so-called measurement will stay there and keep showing you where you are even after you've cut it, unlike a pencil notation of thickness. So it is really allowing us to work quickly. Cool technique.
Well, get in there. Why don't we smooth this out? Actually, I'm going to practice what I preach and sharpen this tool. I will be back. <laughs> 